Welcome to this lesson on the Astra MX-1 Compact Provisioning – How to Add a User. This is the second part of a two-part series. Our goal is to use the MX-1 Manager Provisioning Tool to add a user. In Part 1, we assigned an extension, configured the personal number list, and configured a function key. In this lesson, Part 2, we'll continue by looking at additional settings under the Advanced Extension Information, and then we'll add and configure a voicemail box. We'll now continue and take a look at the Advanced Extension Information settings. And as a reminder, when I click on the Advanced button, you'll see and have access to additional settings. And so that we can tell the difference, the Advanced options are highlighted in gray. I'll now continue with the Advanced Extension Information. The first Advanced option is Maximum Charging Cost. The idea behind this feature is to assign a maximum cost, and once the call exceeds this cost, the call is disconnected. The next option is Allow Security Exception. If the box is checked or selected, the extension is allowed in the system without signaling or media encryption. The next field is Include Call by Name. When the box is checked or selected, when you press and hold down a key on the phone, a list of contacts from the phone book is displayed starting with the letter that you've pressed. The next option is Name Presentation Order. I can choose to display the first name or the second name which is the same as the last name. Continuing on, the next field is Set Presentation Restriction. If I check this box, I'll restrict the caller ID presentation. Unchecking the box allows caller ID to be displayed. If you have pre-recorded announcements, you can select a welcome announcement or a continuous announcement. Under the Authorization Code heading, the first field is Authorization Code. Authorization codes are used to limit or authorize public access possibilities for different user groups and individuals. When an authorization code has been entered, the call logging code, common service profiles, customer group, and new customer group fields are enabled. The call logging code is used to identify the calling party in the calling log. When using the call logging code, a standard practice is to make the call logging code the same as the extension number. The next option is Restrict Use to this extension only. If this box is checked, then the authorization code can only be used on this extension. The next heading is Parallel Ringing. In these two fields, we can add a secondary directory number that will ring in parallel with this extension. Under the Special Purpose Extension is where you could make this extension a hotline or a delayed hotline. If you selected either of these choices, then you could enter in the hotline number. The Allow Follow Me After Diversion option is only used on digital and analog phones and won't be used with SIP or IP phones. Next is Provide First Ringtone. When you select or check this box, your main phone will ring one time when calls are made to your personal number list. When I'm finished with this screen, I'll click on the Continue button. The next thing that I'll do is to add a mailbox. If there's already a mailbox built, I can assign a pre-existing mailbox and the server. I don't have a pre-existing mailbox, so I'll click on the Add button to add a new mailbox for this extension. From the drop-down box, I'll need to select the messaging server that I'll use with my new mailbox. Then I'll click the Next button. The following four fields are pre-populated. Mailbox ID, Mailbox Extension, Subscriber Name, and Department Name. From the drop-down window, I'll select the class of service. Under Message Retention, you can set it for unlimited or you can define a number of days. For this user, I'll select 30 days. Enter a numeric password for your voicemail box. The password can be 2 to 15 digits long. In the Confirm Password box, you'll need to enter the same password a second time. Under the heading Message Waiting Indicator, there are two checkboxes. Enable Message Waiting Indicator and Current Message Waiting Indicator. If you receive a voicemail, you can get notification on the phone if Message Waiting Indicator is enabled. You would check the second box if you would like to test the Message Waiting Indicator. If you check this box, it will force the phone to display the message waiting indication, regardless of whether there's any messages or not. Again, this is a way of testing, so when you're finished, uncheck this box. 
The third option is when to clear the message waiting indicator. Your first choice is when the inbox is empty. Your second choice is when you've read the first unread message. And your third choice is when you've read all unread messages. For this example, I'll turn the message waiting indicator off after I've listened to the first unread message. Under the heading Messaging Presentation, the first option is Presentation. There are two checkboxes. The first checkbox is Autoplay First Message. If this box is selected, messages are played in the order they were left. If the box is cleared, the main menu is played, and then you would have to press 1 to listen to new messages. The next checkbox is Sort Urgent First. If you check this box, messages that are marked urgent are played first. The next option is Listen by Type. If this box is checked, then the messages are sorted and separated by type. For example, voice, fax, or email. The next option is Order by. If you select First In, First Out, you'll be listening to your oldest messages first. If you select the next option, Last In, First Out, you'll listen to your newest messages first. For this example, I'll select First In, First Out. Under the next heading, Email, if you plan to use Unified Messaging, then you'll enter in your email server, email address, email display name, and then the next option, you'll define what type of message access the email client should have. Your choices are None, Unified Messaging, or you can select ICA WPM, which provides messaging voicemail users with a direct gateway between their email client and their mailboxes. Next is Alternate Extensions. This is an older feature where some of the call processing was handled by the voicemail system. In modern telephone systems, generally all call processing is handled by the PBX. There may be some customized applications that would benefit from this feature, but that's all I'm going to cover in this training. Now I'll click on the Advanced button so that we can see the extended set of options. As I scroll down, under the SMS heading, the first option is Allow SMS. If I select this box, you are giving the user permission to use SMS notification over the phone. Also, if you select this box, the next box, Enable SMS, will also be enabled. When the SMS box is checked, or has been turned on by the Allow SMS feature, you are turning on the SMS notification for the users. When the Enable SMS box is checked, the next four options are also enabled. SMS Provider, Include Voice Messages, Include Fax Messages, and Notify Time. When a voice or fax message is received, the messaging voicemail checks the SMS settings in the user mailbox to determine if a new message notification via SMS should be sent. The next option is Mobile Phone. Enter the telephone number of the mobile phone to which notifications are sent when the SMS message provider is an SMS message type. The next option is SMTP address. Enter the SMTP email address to which notifications are sent when the SMS provider is an SMTP message type. The next option is Send Message Attachment. You'll select this box if the user shall be able to receive voicemail, fax, or both as an email attachment. I'll click on the Basic button to return back to the Basic view. When I'm finished configuring the mailbox and ready to accept the settings, I'll click on the Continue button to return back to the Service Summary page. To finalize all of these settings and to add this user, I'll click on the Apply button. And I can see on the next page that my add operation was successful for my user B. Smith. I'll click on the Done button to return back to the main user screen. To the left of the users are three icons, a magnifying glass, a pencil, and a red X. Clicking on the magnifying glass lets you view the user's settings. Clicking on the pencil lets you change and edit the user settings, and clicking on the red X will delete the user from the system. There's also a checkbox next to each name. You can select one user or multiple users. Then you would click on one of the five buttons at the bottom of the screen. Change, Remove, Print, Compare, and View. Let me demonstrate how Compare would work. I'll select my first user, B. Smith, 
and then I'll select my second user, Jay Kessler. I'll click on the Compare button, and now I can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two users. Now I have the opportunity to change B. Smith, or I can change J. Kessler, or when I'm finished, I'll click on the Done button. That completes this lesson on the provisioning and how to add a user. And the last thing that I'll do before I leave this application is to log out. This is the end of a two-part lesson. In Part 1, we assigned an extension, configured the personal number list, and configured a function key. In this lesson, Part 2, we continued by looking at the additional settings under the advanced extension information. Then we added and configured a voicemail box. This completes this presentation on the Astra MX1 Compact provisioning, how to add a user. So for all of us here, we would like to thank you for your interest in Astra. If you would like to know more about our award-winning products, please visit our website at www.astrausa.com or call us at 1-800-468-3266 and at the prompt, select option 2.